equity, equity briefings, and equity violations. These terms are increasingly present in many debate competitions. But what exactly is equity? All in all, you might want to think of equity as a kind of fairness guarantee that says no matter what your identity is, you should be able to participate as fully as you want in debating. Equity is a relatively recent phenomenon. Equity officers having meaningful power is an even more recent phenomenon. In the 1990s, the American Parliamentary Debate Association had equal opportunity facilitators. They are one of the earliest precedents to modern equity officers and equity teams. However, they had little power beyond using their personal relationships to meaningfully address problems. In 2001, CUSID published a white paper that highlighted obstacles to gender parity in the Canadian circuit. This was followed up with a Code of Conduct report in 2002. These papers were bombshells and jump-started discussions about equity in North America. WUDC began having an equity officer around this time who was focused exclusively on EFL and ESL classification. I think similar conversations were occurring in various circuits uh, that problematized the lack of diversity in the breaks and late out rounds of major tournaments, especially in relation to women and people of color. Around that time, and a bit later, the Monash Debating Review published several other data-driven pieces on men outspeaking women, adjudication bias for the home team, and other similar topics. 2007 Vancouver WUDC was a major turning point. That year, WUDC Council passed a resolution requiring future WUDC tournaments to appoint an equity officer, quote, who shall be responsible for dealing with issues arising from discrimination relating to gender, race, religion, sexual preference, physical handicap, or otherwise. A language officer, now a distinct position, is responsible for ESL and EFL classification. The World Universities Debating Championship is one of the largest and most prestigious debate events. Although their policies are only binding to WUDC, their decisions influence community norms. I think as they started out, equity policies tended to focus more on explicit instances of racist or sexist discrimination. So for example, calling some kind of speech bitchy or hysterical or using uh, gendered slurs or racial slurs within a round. Move far more to looking at language now and how language might inadvertently make individuals uncomfortable within the context of a round. Equity teams can now use a variety of tools, ranging from mediated discussions and warnings to expulsion from the tournament and involvement of law enforcement. Equity policies vary based on tournament discretion, size, and geographic region. Debaters forget that debaters are people, and they are made out of these people that come from these communities. So if you are a Malaysian debater, sometimes it's understandable if they are not as exposed towards like sexual liberation because it's not as much of a norm. So perhaps when these debaters come into the debating sphere and they are unable to argue as eloquently when it comes to sexual liberation arguments, then it's not because the person doesn't understand equity or doesn't deserve equity, but it's because the starting off point of that equity differs. So the good thing about equity and what I feel equity is, is it's a tool to discipline debaters to make sure that we can talk about things that matter in a respectful and mature way. As debate becomes a more diverse activity, equity concerns are increasingly important. WUDC has introduced new equity and affirmative action policies. This is very controversial when it was discussed at Dutch Worlds. There was a two-year phase-in period and it's going to come in in a modified form for the first time this year at Cape Town Worlds. It applies only to teams that are sending three teams or more to this tournament. So that's three teams and two judges as a full contingent. And the rule is that it's one third of the speakers rounded down need to identify as female or non-binary, just essentially any non-male identification, whereas the contingent as a whole needs to be one third identifying as non-male. 
I suspect we'll hear even more buzz about it as it gets implemented in its fullest form at Thailand WDC next year, where it will start applying to all contingents, not just contingents with three or more teams. Worlds is a tournament that has individuals from so many different circuits. We try to be as clear as possible about the kinds of guidelines in terms of how people watch their language. So things like generalizations, terms that might not be considered offensive in one culture, but could be considered very offensive in another culture. We wanted to flag those and make it very clear to people that these were things they had to think about. The last thing about the equity policy was the governance of behavior at socials. Asking individuals to be aware of things like power dynamics, age differences, consent under the influence of alcohol, all of these things we wanted to make very, very clear. So without this intervention, there is a very real risk that the dynamics of debating events end up mirroring inequalities outside debating. So any conduct or policy that discriminates on the basis of gender, race, religion, nationality, or language status threatens the fairness of competitions and needs to be dealt with. It can also turn people away from debating. Now, this is bad for the individuals affected, but it's also bad for debating as an activity. Equity is aided by these kinds of normative shifts not necessarily only by strict equity policies and quota policies, but the ways in which those kinds of policies change how we talk about individuals or how we treat individuals. I'm hoping that equity can provide a safe space where all ideas can be treated equally, whether that's liberal ideas or whether that's conservative ideas, so that nobody has to feel like they're pushed on the defensive. I feel like once we reach that point, that's when we truly make a difference in debating that you wouldn't get outside of debating within the casual social setting. Thank you so much for watching our video. We hope that it was a educational, enjoyable, and informative experience. If you'd like to know more about these issues, you can check out old equity policies from various tournaments that are online or chat with the equity team at your local tournament. Smash that like button. Ha ha ha.